Hello and welcome to this year's Key Stage 4 Options video for you Year 9. Now what I hope you'll see over the next hour are all our subjects are on offer for you. We're very proud of the offer here at Unions Academy and the range of a, a choice that you will have as a student. So please have a look at that. Listen to your teachers as they talk to you about the content within each one. It may feel a long way away Year 10, but it's not. It's going to come sooner than you think. So now's the time to start thinking about those options because very soon you'll be asked to make that choice. So enjoy the video and I'll see you at the end. Hi Year 9, we're really looking forward to teaching you English over the next two years of your school career and I'm just going to explain a little bit about what you're going to do. So you'll do five hours of English each week, which sounds like a lot, but I promise you will go quickly like that. And at the end of it, you'll get two GCSEs, one in English language, one in English literature. So in literature, you're going to study four main groups of writing. The first is a couple of plays, so you're going to study an Inspector Calls, by J.B. Priestley, and you are going to study the brilliant, my favourite, Macbeth by Shakespeare. And both of them are about the differences between right and wrong, and how the uh, decisions that we take can impact on others. Macbeth is fantastic, it's all about violence and ambition, and what happens when you kill the king. Great stuff. Then you're going to study a novel, and the novel we've chosen is A Christmas Carol by uh, Charles Dickens. And in that novel, I'm sure plenty of you will know the story of it already, uh, we've got a really bad man, Scrooge, who is visited by ghosts, and the question of the whole novel is, will Scrooge become a better person? I'm not going to spoiler alert it. And then the fourth section of your literature course, uh, you're going to study poetry. And there are two bits to the poetry. One is a selection of 15 poems that we're going to study in depth. And they are looking at conflict and war and battles and the different way that different groups in society come up against each other. And then the second is we're going to study a course which looks at how you analyse a poem when you see it for the first time. When you put all of that together, that creates your English Literature GCSE. And then the other GCSE is your language GCSE, and you'll study that all the way through the two-year course. And that's basically bro broken up into two sections, a reading section and a writing section. And you'll be examined at the end of year 11 on how you're able to look at a piece of writing never seen before, and analyse it and compare it to other bits of writing, uh, and also to give an opinion on it. And then the writing section will look at how you write non-fiction, so speeches, letters, articles, that kind of thing that you'll have looked at a bit before, but we'll go into much more depth in uh, year 10 and 11. And then the fiction section, which will look at how you do a piece of creative writing. So can you write uh, a kind of story? Can you write a descriptive piece? How imaginative can you be? We're really, really looking forward to teaching a language and literature. You'll be absolutely great, I know it. Uh, and roll on year 10. Hi, year 9. Uh, I'm Mr. Mackey. I'm the Key Stage 4 leader in maths. Now, as you know, maths isn't an option. Uh, you are all taking it. So what is going to be assessed in your, in your maths GCSE? solving problems, spot patterns, say factorising, algebra and geometry, ratio and proportion skills. We use the Edexcel exam board. It's three exam papers that you'll set all at the end of year 11 uh, and each paper has an equal weighting so each paper is worth a third of your, of your mark. Um, one of those papers is non-calculator and the other two are calculator. Uh, and each one is going to last for an hour and 30 minutes. Now there are two tiers that you could be entered for, higher or foundation. Uh, as you can see from the graphic in the, in the top right, higher is a bit more geared towards um, algebra and, and geometry measures, whereas your foundation focuses more on your number and your ratio and proportion skills. Mr Walker is now going to talk to you about uh, maths, what it's needed for in real life and, and why it is so important that you get a, a good GCSE in your maths. Hello and welcome to Maths in Two Minutes-ish with Mr Walker. Over the next two minutes I'm hopefully going to cover what can I do with maths, why do I need it and do I have to do it. Yes we have to do maths at GCSE but you're going to enjoy every single second of it. 
to when will I ever need maths? Regardless of the path that you choose to take, employers and colleges are going to want you to be able to show that you can use your maths effectively, whether that's through a college, a university or an apprenticeship. So what skills have we got already from working in maths? Well, the skills that we've got are vary from critical thinking, problem solving, communication and time management. So where are we going to use these skills? So in the future, these are going to be skills that we need to use throughout our career. Business Insider recently released its jobs of 30 top jobs of the future, and these are going to become available over the next five to 10 years. And interestingly, skills that appear the most in these jobs are the following. The first one being maths. Now 26 out of the 30 jobs that they list as a job coming up in the future require maths as a top three skill. So that's nearly 87% of those jobs that are going to appear. The second skill that they listed was analytical thinking and all 30 of those jobs listed this as a key skill to use in that career path. Careers that you can already take then in maths include accounting, electrician, you could be a teacher, you could work in banking, you could even work in the space industry. All these careers have maths listed as a useful or an essential skill. That's our two minute tour of maths. I hope you enjoyed it. If you need to know more, come and speak to your maths teachers. We're available on Teams and we're available in form times in the morning to ask any questions too. Uh, hello, um, I'm Karen Jones and I'm Head of Science at uh, Ulands Academy. Science is a core subject, that means everybody must take science and it's also an option subject as well. We all follow the AQA Trilogy Combined Science. You will study biology, chemistry and physics. And the unit shown here, cells, organisation, disease and atoms and bonding and organic chemistry, lots of energy and forces in physics, we all must study. And we will come out at Y11 with two GCSE grades. The exams we will take if we take that course are six exams each of one hour and 15 minutes and the GCSEs that you receive will be called science. They won't be called biology, physics and chemistry. They will be called combined science. Now that's the option that everybody must take because science is a core subject in our country. What I'm really here to talk to you about today is taking science as an option. And rather than being called science, they will be called biology, physics, and chemistry. You will cover all of the same material that you would with the combined plus some extra. If you take combined science, Unit 5 Biology will allow you to study the nervous system and the hormone system. You'll learn about blood sugar control, you'll learn about uh, reproduction and you'll learn about control of fertility. Okay. If you take biology as a separate science, you will do all of that. But in addition, you will study the kidney, you will study the brain, you will study the eye, and you'll study about hormones in plants as well as hormones in humans. And so it's the same and extra, and it gives you an additional science GCSE, and it gives you and biology, chemistry, physics GCSE instead of a science GCSE. Who does separate science? Is it right for you? Do you love finding out about the world around you, the objects around you, the food around you, the animals, the plants? Do you like finding out how you work? Do you ask these questions? Do you really want to know the answers and are you willing to put in the hard work to understand these things for yourself? If the answer is yes, then you should be thinking about taking triple science, separate sciences. So second question, why would you want to take separate science? It is hard, uh, so why would you want to take this on? 
So, uh, have a look at uh, how the world that we live in, the ever-increasing technology-based world we live in, and think about the number of jobs that need a science background. The whole of medicine, the whole of engineering, the whole of artificial intelligence, aeronautics, space, all require a science background. The opportunities for people trained in STEM, that's science, technology, engineering and maths, which essentially start with a science background at school. 2.65 million jobs needed to be filled by 2024. That's before you guys even finish your A-levels. There is a vast amount of opportunity for people trained in science. And therefore there are many apprenticeships, A-levels, degree courses that require good science qualifications. Now, um, really important that I tell you, doing the combined science will not close any doors to you. It will not stop you going on to A-level science. It will not stop you gaining a technical based apprenticeship. You can go on from combined science, the double award and become a heart surgeon or a vet or an aeronautical engineer. There is nothing that will be closed off to you as an opportunity. If you want any further information, if you are in doubt whether you would be good enough, then speak to your current science teacher and they will talk to you about whether it's the right pathway for you. Coaches play a critical role. I wouldn't be where I am today without mine. Personal trainers are incredibly important for every sports person, but they're also very useful for anyone looking to improve their health and fitness. I believe sports managers are crucial to the health of the world of sport. There are a wide range of roles to choose from in the sports manager field. The importance of the sports scientist role is growing all the time, as our understanding of the world of the human body and physical activity deepens. They work with the team behind me to equip us with the latest knowledge, studies and information available to help improve physical prowess and performance. Hello, welcome to the technology department at Ulands Academy. My name's Miss Abano. I'm going to be taking you through the subject and the three courses that we run here at Ulands. The first is design and technology. The second is food preparation and nutrition. And the third is 3D design. Hi, my name's Mrs. Pearson and I'm going to be talking to you about design and technology. You can see here a range of products that we make in year 10. There are some more things that we do, but we can't fit all of the photographs onto one side. So we look at different modeling techniques and working in different materials, using different tools and machines and equipment in the workshop. So we do a couple of little games like tic-tac-toe and desk tidies as well, just to get us familiar with everything that we've got available to us to use. So the design and technology course is assessed in two main areas. 50% of which is your NEA, the non-examined assessment, which is basically your coursework. This will consist of a 20 page design portfolio and a manufactured product. And the other 50% is based upon a formal exam, which is sat at the end of year 11. Along with making lots of different projects, there is also a lot of theory that goes with this course. 
So you can see here on this slide that I have some of the theory sheets that we use to compile your notes, which of course are really important because we need them for the formal exam. We cover things like material theory. We also look at new technologies and marketing and manufacturing and industry. So your coursework starts at the end of year 10. So on this slide, you can see that I've got some examples of pages from the coursework itself. On here, I have some of the research and the design specification. All of this is done on A3 pages. So there's quite a lot of work that goes into it and quite a lot of detail. Here you can see an example of some design ideas. You will be producing a big range of different ideas for one solution. So the one product that you choose, you will have lots of different ideas of how you can produce that product. You will then work your way through coming up and with and developing a final solution of how you're going to manufacture that product. Whilst manufacturing your product, you can see here that we expect students to take photographs of the process and write about the process as well to demonstrate their knowledge and understanding to the examiner. Once the manufacturing process has been completed, then we will test and evaluate the success of your product. So there you have the design technology course in a nutshell. Ideally, this course would be best suited to those who wanted to go on to engineering or who wanted to pursue some kind of industrial design, such as fashion design or interior design. Thank you for listening. Hello Year 9, here is your GCSE Food Preparation and Nutrition option information. I'm hoping that this PowerPoint today, this video, will go through a few things that you will be interested in. To start us off then, what does the course look like now? The course is split 50-50 between the non-examined assessment or NEA, sometimes known as coursework, and 50% exam. So the practicals that we'll do then next year in year 10, we might have a look at doing some puff pastry. It's all about getting some skills up. So we'll do some uh, more fun um, practicals that people tend to enjoy, such as sweet practicals, maybe making a cake or brownies, um, use our puff pastry in pan au chocolat, uh, chocolate croissants, okay, you'll need to learn how to make homemade pasta from scratch so that you are prepared for when it comes to your coursework. You also, as a key requirement for the course, have to make sure that you can portion a chicken, so take a whole chicken and joint it up into the different portions, and also fillet a fish, so you'll take a whole fish and slice through it and take all the bones out and everything. So here is the topics that we'll cover during year 10 that make up all the information that you will need for the exam in the summer of year 11. So you can see here hopefully that it is broken down into five chapters. Now chapter one focuses on nutrition and health, chapter two looks at food science, chapter three we have a look into food safety so a little bit about food poisoning and food, chapter four is food choice so we look at what causes people to choose different diets. We also have a look at different cuisines so where things from all around the world. Chapter five then we look at food provenance which covers more about the food sustainability and how food is produced. One of our latest and newest additions to the technology department is 3D design. This is a GCSE which is based around art and design and we studied this under the exam board AQA. Over the next few slides I would like to show you some examples of different students work from 3D. Now the wonderful thing about this course is you have a lot of chances to experiment using different materials. One of the materials that has been used in the past is recycled materials, so things like bottle lids, plastics, and that has been used in this case to produce products, 3D products, around the theme of underwater world. Another example of a 3D product made is this one here of the coffee table. Again, looking at different materials, this one is purely made out of timber. Another example of how diverse the course is. Depending on what your task is that you have been given, it will depend on what avenue you wish to go down to produce the final 3D product. 
As you can see with the two different themes that I hear, one person has gone down the avenue of using paper mache, the other student has gone down the avenue of using birch plywood to produce their 3D product. Architectural work is an element that we have looked into in year 10 this year and you can see some of the examples of work that have been produced around their design work and around their modelling work. Over the next few slides I'd like to take you through and show you the coursework, the portfolio work that the students can produce. Um, I would like to show you how diverse it can be yet again and how it's up to you how you present your work. You can either do it by handwriting or using the computer or a mixture of both. We would request and instruct you that when you enter the course in year 10 that you have a portfolio to keep your work safe in and start to present it and take pride in your work. You can see obviously what has happened with this piece of work. They have worked on different materials and then have cut these out, mounted their work and then added it to their portfolio. Another example of a student's work is here with the inspiration board that is produced. Now again, you'll be taught all of this in year 10 and then shown how to lay out and present your work to the highest possible standard. The course obviously enables you to be experimental and testing of your work is strongly encouraged as can be seen from this page. And finally from me, I hope you've enjoyed listening to the 3D course and I hope it inspires you to choose this as one of your options. If you have any questions at all about any of the three courses, design technology, food preparation and nutrition and 3D, please feel free to contact me. Hello Year 9, here is your BTEC Childcare Options Evening PowerPoint. I'm hoping that this PowerPoint today will provide you with information about the course that you might not already know. Is BTEC Childcare the course for you? Do you want to make a difference to children's lives? Are you interested in the development of children? Ever wondered how you learn to read and write? Do you want to know and understand how children grow and develop? Do you enjoy self-led learning and research? And finally, does the idea of coursework interest you? Here is an overview of the BTEC childcare course. So you will study three units throughout the two years that you do childcare. Unit one is an exam unit. Okay, so this means that you are externally assessed through an exam, which normally takes place in January. And that's looking at patterns of children's development. Unit 2 and Unit 3 are both assessed by us in school. So Unit 2 is about promoting children's development through play and Unit 3 is all about the principles of early years practice. In order to make sure that you flourish and that you get the best out of your learning and build your confidence around the childcare curriculum, we will make sure that you are involved in mini research tasks, looking at case studies, practical lessons where possible. Um, and finally, educational visits. So we might go to Longley Park Sixth Form who also do level three in childcare in order to gain different experiences around the childcare course as a whole. Okay, this might be something you later on think about doing in college. So it's a good subject to have now in order to link to that in the future. So if you take BTEC childcare, it can lead to a number of different things, okay? You might go on to college to do BTEC childcare level three. You might be more interested in the older age groups and therefore think about going on to college to look at BTEC health and social care, okay? But beyond that, you might want to think about an apprenticeship, okay? So you could be a nursery nurse assistant, Okay, or you could go into teaching and be some form of teaching assistant. But then in the future, um, as you progress further, there is a list there of things where childcare could take you. So you could be a health visitor, you could be a nurse, you could go into social work. You may even look at midwifery. There's loads of different options that you can, you can look at with BTEC childcare as your qualification. If this is something you are interested in and you want have a few questions or want to know anything else, um, please get in touch and just ask me and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have.
Right, hello year nine. Um, you're maybe not, some of you may not sure who I am yet, because um, I know that you're a Mr. Greasley for computer science this year. Um, but I'm Mr. Chapman, I'm the head of the department for computer science and be one of the teachers who's teaching year 10. It will probably be me or Mr. Greasley teaching any option subjects that I talk about today. Um, in the department we have a number of options. We've got computer science, we've got iMedia, we've got Enterprise. So for in a few minutes now, talk about each to give, kind of give you an idea of what we offer. Um, so computer science is our first option. Okay, this is our GC option. And it's, it's for people who are logical thinkers, interested in problem solving, interested in programming and how computers work, all those kind of things. Um, it's there really to kind of get you onto that next, next stage if you want to do something to do with computer science, maybe maths, but actually it fits so well into so many other subjects. These days in the current world we're in with so much computers involved in jobs, it's a good option for anything you want to do really. So why choose computer science? Okay, firstly, it's completely different to anything else we offer in school. Okay, there's no subject that's like computer science. Okay, it's there for people who are really interested in computers. Okay, things like how computers work, how to program computers, all those kind of things. It's obviously a nice gateway if you want to go and do that at university or at college, but also it's just such a useful skill to have across multiple different jobs, multiple different careers. Okay, it's a really, really um, important skill that just not many people have in this country. So it's a really good way of marketing yourself when you go for jobs in the future. On this slide um, is a list of all the topics that are covered in the exams. I'm not going to go through each one individually, but as you can see, it's split into two sides. So we've got computer systems, which is one exam paper, and then we've got computational thinking, algorithms and programming on the other side. Okay, there's multiple topics in there. Okay, but like I said, it took me too long to go through all of them. If you've got any questions about each, any of these topics, please come and see me in school or send me an email and I'll get back in touch with you and tell you a little bit more about these if you need it. The course breakdown for computer science is really, really simple. It is just simply split into two exams. So each exam is an hour and a half long, worth 50% each. So possible careers, there's so many linked, com linked to computer science. I've listed some down there for you. So there's things like graphic designer, web designer, there's um, development, there's program, there's software engineering, there's cyber security. There's literally hundreds I could list of possible careers in computer science. But what's key about computer science is that it's a really, really in demand skill in this country. Okay, we haven't got enough graduates to fill the jobs at the minute. Okay, and actually some of the highest paid jobs in this country are linked to computer science. So it's a really good option to choose if you're not sure what you want to do yet. Um, it, it just opens up so many doors. Right, the next subject we're going to look at is iMedia. This is our other option. This is our more creative option. <clears throat> okay, so for them people who are probably more creative, a little bit more hands-on, okay, like making things, a bit more flair in there, this might be something you're more interested in. This is something for somebody who maybe wants to use a graphic design, some sort of media um, career. This is a really good option for you. So again, why, why choose iMedia? Just like computer science, okay, it's such an important job these days. Every company is going to be using some sort of media daily on their daily basis, so new people who's able to do that. Okay, digital literacy and the ability to use these skills is quite rare still in this country, and it's something that the government are having a big push on. Okay, and, and workforces are looking actively for people who've got these skills. Okay, so there's loads of reasons to choose these kind of courses. So, what topics would you cover? Okay, so in, in our media, we have four different topics we have as a one, which is the exam. Okay, and that's all about pre-production skills. So looking at what happens before we produce something. So things like storyboards, coming up with scripts, um, doing mind maps, all those kind of things come into as 81 You then got as 82 which is digital graphics. Okay, we use Photoshop to do that. So it's looking at some Photoshop skills, editing photos, doing a bit of research into where photos are used, all those different things come into digital graphics. We then do as 88 which is a sound editing software um, piece of coursework. So again, we use software to edit sounds come up with what usually is a radio advertisement. Again, looking into researching to where it's used in everyday life, and then going through that. And then as 091, okay, is coming up with a game concept. Okay, I don't want people going to this course thinking we're gonna be making games, that's not the case. This is all about the concept of a game, so coming up with the ideas for the game, so things like coming up with character design, level design, all that kind of stuff goes into this unit. So the course breakdown in our media is really simple again. You've got four units, all with 25% each. So we have the mandatory two units, which is R081, which is the exam, and then R082, which is the um, graphic design piece of coursework. And then we have two optional units, which we choose R088 and R091, which is sound editing, and the game concept, which again, are both coursework pieces units. So this one actually has three pieces of coursework, it's 75%, and one exam worth 25%. So possible careers from this, um, again, quite similar. 
There's so many, um, you've got web design, graphic designer, um, sound editing, anything kind of media related, so video, sound, images, anything like that, this course is gonna pay really well for. But again, there's so many transferable skills in this course that actually having this qualification is gonna make you more employable in the future because you can show that you've got that digital literacy and you're able to use computers effectively. And then finally, our, our last course is BTEC Enterprise. Okay, so BTEC Enterprise is a business studies related course that looks at how small enterprises work. So if you're looking at local businesses, see how they operate, how they use market research, how they, how they make sure they stay ahead of their competition, all those kind of things. And then you'll also look at coming up with your own business idea and pitching that idea to, to what the staff at school. Okay, again, so obviously this is a course for somebody who is really interested in business, maybe wants to go into business when they're older, something like that would be great for this course. So why would you why choose enterprise? Okay, it's for those people again who are creative, quite hands-on, they've got an interest in businesses, how businesses work. Okay, maybe want to want to be a businessman or they maybe want to be an entrepreneur and come up with their own idea. Um, maybe you've already got an idea that you think this allows you with. All those are great for there. This course, um, again, it's quite a transferable course. Okay, so all those skills that you learn in business are gonna be useful in life. So things like presenting, it's gonna be vital when you get as you get older, um, confidence, all those kind of things are kind of part of the business. Um, course that we offer so that's the kind of people why you might choose this course. What topics do we cover? We, the first unit is all about enterprise so we look at small enterprises in the local area and we look at how they operate what kind of market research to do all those kind of things with that unit and we then look at internal and external factors that impact that business and then the second unit of coursework we look at a um, could it with our own idea and create a pitch in order to try and um, sell your idea to, a, to an audience which is usually a few members of staff Okay, and then the exam is looking at promotion and finance. So you look at things like break even, um, how to calculate profit and loss, and then looking at how business support itself. Okay, this course has a slightly different breakdown to um, Creative Eye Media. This one actually has three units. Um, you have two pieces of coursework, unit one and unit two, which are 50% each, and then the exam, which is an hour and a half, same as um, computer science. But this time it's worth 5% of your course. So you've got two pieces of coursework, 50% each, so 6% coursework, and then one exam, which is 5%. Again, just some possible careers that could come with doing enterprise. So you've got accountant, you've got bank manager, you've got entrepreneur, you've got business administration, um, HR, human resources. But again, the skills you learn in business studies are so transferable that it opens up so many avenues to different jobs. So my name is Lucy Richardson and I'm the Head of Drama. So I want to go over with you the course structure of GCSE Drama. So there are three components and they all cover the various and very wide skill base um, that you would need to pursue a career in the performing arts. So in component one, we look at creating and devising an original piece of theatre. You are set a choice of stimuli by the exam board and you work with a group of your choosing to select one of those stimuli and then you're given about six to nine months to work with your group on researching different ideas, developing a concept that interests you. So it's really lovely, it's a fantastic opportunity to start thinking about how you could possibly change the world through your piece of theatre and that's what we try and teach you is trying to make theatre that matters to you and really get your teeth into it. Now alongside this in component one, you create and keep a log of all of the work that you do. And this is like a diary that you keep from all of your lessons. And this will be submitted as a piece of portfolio evidence, a written essay at the end. Then we move on to component two. Component two is by far everybody's favourite component. So this is what most people choose to do drama for. So this is where you are cast in a extract from a professional published piece of theatre. So we're script and I will work with you to choose an appropriate extract that you are happy with that I think is going to work the best for you. So this is like a casting audition process and then you will be given again about three to six months to work either as a solo or with a small group of ensemble actors to put this performance together. Now this will be assessed as a final performance exam that is live in front of an examiner. So there's a real sense of occasion that you are performing in a real live theatre experience. And there is no written element to this, this is pure performance. Now I might want to add here, 
that you can also do the technical option rather than acting. And that goes in both component one and in component two. So if you choose that you want to study lighting, sound, costume, hair, makeup, you can do a bespoke option. So you don't have to act at all on this GCSE in drama. What you can do is become technical support in both component one and component two, where you are placed with a group of ensemble actors and you are tasked with enhancing their performance through your chosen tech. Now, finally, we have component three. Component three is the written exam. Now, I don't want anyone to panic and think, oh, it's a written exam. Everything is studied practically. So we study this through three different roles. We study a play text through the role of an actor, through the role of a designer, and through the role of a director. Now, with that, we also have to study a, a live performance review. So for this, we all go as a class and we watch a professional production at a theatre. And then we all come back to school and we talk about our favourite bits and you, as a reviewer, are asked to write about what you thought the best bits were about this performance. So if you are, was, were an actor in component one and component two, you might want to focus on some of the acting skill. If you were a designer and know a lot about atmosphere being created through costume, lighting or sound, then you may want to follow that route and write your review based on your technical skill. So why choose drama then? There are many reasons to choose drama. The biggest reason that I'm going to give you is if you love it. So if you are interested in the performing arts, that is the biggest reason to take this course. Because all that we'll do is nurture that interest and that love of the performing arts. If you're interested in going into stage makeup and special effects, I can give you the tools to grow that response and that talent. So the biggest reason to choose drama is to grow yourself, and to follow a creative path and to do something it's just that little bit different it's so different to everything else you're going to do in school hi i'm mr ingham and i'm here to tell you about gcse fine art um, we're going to start with a few quiz questions and i'll give you the answers at the end okay question number one who painted the mona lisa question number two where was picasso from and question number three what is gouache? Okay, so what will you do in GCSE Fine Art? Well, there's exploring techniques such as pencil work, pastel, charcoal, pen, pen and wash. Then there's paint techniques, acrylic, oil, gouache, spray paint, and then there's mixed media, there's collaging, there's photography and digital media. Okay, so you're going to gain knowledge of loads of different artists and designers from way back in time, right up to the present day. So you get to develop and explore your own ideas, and we have topics such as portraits, landscapes, nature, street art, identity. So when you've done all your research and ideas, you get to create final pieces, and these could be on massive pieces of wood or card or canvases and here's some examples so how is your work assessed well there's four assessment objectives and you have to cover them all in your project and what we like to see is a journey of ideas from your very first starting point all the way through to your final piece and it's great because 60 percent of the mark is coursework so as long as you're keeping on top of all your classwork and your homework that's 60% of the final mark, and then the exam is worth 40%. So art is great if you like exploring ideas and techniques. And do you have to be good at art? Well, you do have to have confident drawing skills and the ability to work independently. Is there any homework? You are expected to do homework each week. It's always linked in with what we're doing. And are there any trips? Well, at the moment, not because of COVID, but we are planning to do some trips to London or another big city later in the year. GCSE Fine Art is a great way to begin your journey in the creative sector which has been growing steadily in recent years. You might want to go to college to study art and design and that could lead on to a degree and here are some of the many jobs where art is useful. So here's the answers to the quiz questions. Who painted the Mona Lisa? It was Leonardo da Vinci. And where was Picasso from? He was from Spain. 
and also what is gouache it's a type of water-based paint so i hope you got three out of three and really look forward to you taking art next year thank you for watching You'll be studying three core topics and they are changing places, changing economies, changing environments, environmental challenges. Fieldwork studies is another huge aspect of GCSE geography and one that's highly enjoyable. Miss Bissett has got some words of wisdom here to say about fieldwork at GCSE. It's one of her favourite aspects of the course. As part of the GCSE, you'll have the opportunity to take two fieldwork studies in two contrasting locations. Fieldwork is a fundamental part of this GCSE as it enables you to develop geographical understanding of the real world around us. GCSE Geography is taught by two members of staff at Ewens, Miss Bissett and Miss Badat. So where can GCSE Geography take you? There are a number of skills that are highly sought after by employers and there's a wealth of jobs that geographers can do. Things like town planners, travel journalists, meteorologists, teaching, working in the armed forces and a whole host of other exciting opportunities. Government also recognises geography as being a hugely important subject as it's part of the English Baccalaureate. Why should you study geography? Well, it's always in the news you'll be able to develop skills to interpret, analyse and evaluate information so you can make decisions about the issues and problems that affect people and the environment with confidence. Hello, I'm Mrs Hurst and I'm one of the health and social care teachers here at Newlands Academy. Health and social care is an exciting vocational course and it is suitable for all learners. This course is perfect if you're considering working in a care setting, working with a range of underrepresented groups um, such as the elderly, early years, children or just generally working with people. This course allows you the opportunity to develop knowledge that is really specific to this sector. It covers both practical and academic learning. Ultimately, this can lead to working with one of the country's lead employers, the health and social care sector. So let's have a look at what you will study in health and social care. So component one makes up of 30% of the course and is coursework. And in component one, you look at something called human lifespan development. This unit looks at um, how people grow and develop sort of from uh, birth right through um, to old age. And you will also look at some of the things that impact on that development physically, intellectually, emotionally and socially. Component two is also a coursework element and is um, made up of another 30% of the course. Um, and this, this component is called uh, Care Values, Health and Social Care Services. And in this component, you look at all the different um, services that are available um, in a health and social care setting. And you look at um, the different values that are within each role. Um, and there is also a practical element to, to this component. Component three then, as you will have worked out by now, component one and two makes up 60% of the course. So you will, you'll not sit an exam until you've completed 60% of the course. Component three, this is the one exam um, component and the title of that, as you can see, is health and wellbeing. And here we look at um, health and wellbeing in, in, in its entirety. So the physiological lifestyle indicators um, that make up health and wellbeing, you'll also be asked to write a health and wellbeing plan. 
Hi everybody, I'm Miss Heathco, I'm the other health and social care teacher at Yulands Academy. So students will study BTEC health and social care over a two year period. Uh, you'll have a, quite a few practical lessons, particularly in unit two. Um, you will be doing um, 2B is a practical piece of coursework, so you, you do kind of a role play of yourself being a carer, a nurse, that kind of um, skilled person. And then you'll, for your, for your Tashi to evaluate your performance, what you could have done best to what, what you, you didn't add in. You do a lot about case studies throughout your whole um, health and social care content unit one two and three there will always be case studies in it because that's what you're doing constantly evaluating case studies what what kind of support do they need what uh, life event have they been through and um, what health checks might they need so you are constantly having different case studies um, analysis of news articles so obviously what's current at the minute we've got the pandemic going on how might that affect um, people who need support in the community how might it, how might it affect people who need hospital checks and quite can't get there you will learn especially in component three how to do health checks uh, so for example um, doing your pulse rate doing your uh, blood pressure knowing what BMI how, how to calculate BMI you'll, you'll learn about all that as well so you might be thinking is health and social care really that important to me so people who have qualifications in health and social care go on to work in some of the following careers so you've got the nhs so obviously all nurses doctors practitioners um, in kind of health midwives all them kind of people who work in hospitals might have took health and social care at some point within their career whether it be at um gcc level a levels they might have gone on to go and do it at university Community care, so if you want to be a carer in the community uh, and work maybe with old people or people who are disabled. Counselling, national and local government, schools, colleges and universities. It might be that you just want to learn about health and social care, to teach health and social care. Social work, occupational therapist and end of life carer. Health and social can also open up many doors if you have chosen to go on and specialise in a particular area. This could include mental health and social care, caring for people with learning difficulties, health and social care for adults and management. So is health and social care for you? If you've obviously done this PowerPoint and thought, yeah, that is definitely for me, it's up my street, it's definitely what I want to do maybe in my life. I know I want to be a nurse, I know I want to be a doctor, I know I want to be um, a carer in some way. Um, then you can contact me or Miss Hurst for more information about the course if that's what you're wanting to ask about. Um, so yeah, if, if it is for you, brilliant and uh, we'll see you in year 10 next year. So how do we get to this point? All of these key events throughout history have shaped our present. Through the study of GCSE history, you can understand how the past links with the present. The rest of this presentation is going to explore some of the key aspects of GCSE history at Ulands. By learning from the past, we can understand the present and ultimately be prepared for the future. If you want to know why things happen or what the reasons are, and you have an inquisitive, curious mind, GCSE History is for you. Studying History at Ulands is exciting. You'll study British history as well as topics from other nations, including the USA and Germany. You'll also discover history across a range of time periods, from modern day all the way back to medieval period. In the GCSE History course, there really is something for everyone. The History Department at Ulands has chosen a broad range of topics. Where can history take you? In an increasingly competitive world, there has never been a better time to study history. The skills you develop, along with the ability to apply your knowledge of past events to future issues, is a skill employers, training programmes and higher education institutions are looking for. History is taught by both Miss Webster and myself, Miss White. Now, one of the biggest things we need from you, if you're going to be one of our GCSE music students, is that you have a real passion 
for music and a desire to do well in this area of study. Now we obviously will want to push you in an area of playing an instrument or vocal work on your written ability as a musician. So we hope that you're up for the challenge and that you can show us your creative ability. Why study a GCSE in music? Well, obviously there are lots of reasons, being things like you enjoy playing an instrument, you might enjoy singing, maybe you have a desire to go into the performing arts and the industry as a grown up. But there are some other things to consider. So recently, um, a study of employers has shown that the skills that you will get from any of the creative arts, and in particular music, will become desirable and transferable skills in the world of work. So your ability to be able to overcome problems with creativity, to be able to look at issues and work with others and be able to be open to different angles. So if you love music, if you play riffs at home, if you can read music, if you've loved your music lessons in Key Stage 3, then this is the course for you. Hi, I'm Mr Ingham. Um, we're going to start with a few quiz questions and I'll give you the answers at the end. Okay, question number one, when was the first photograph ever taken? Question number two, what is the rule of thirds? And question number three, what does the macro function do on a camera? So photography is for people that love taking pictures and you're gonna explore a wide range of techniques in year 10. You'll learn how to uh, use the camera effectively. You'll learn about lighting, framing, presentation, animation, and most of all, Photoshop, which is how we edit your photographs. An important part of Photography GCSE is studying the work of other photographers. Um, we look way back to when the first photograph was taken in 1826, right through up to the present day and we can learn a lot by looking at other people's work. So this creative journey leads you to doing your final pieces and um, themes that we've covered in the past are movement, messages, dreams and portraits. Each project covers all the four assessment objectives and you need to clearly show how your ideas have developed from start to finish. It's important to keep on top of your work all the way through the course because 60% of the final mark is coursework and the exam is worth 40% of the final mark. Here's some of the main questions that come up. Do I need to be good at photography? Well, you just need to have a passion for taking photographs and a large chunk of the time is spent editing photos in Photoshop and you'll learn how to make an ordinary photograph extraordinary. Another question is, do I need a camera? Well, we have cameras in school. Some people choose to get one, but we do have them in school, so you don't need to have your own. And is there homework? Yes, there is homework. And are there any trips? Well, at the moment, not because of COVID, but when the restrictions lift, we're hoping to visit a city where we could take pictures and visit other photographers' work. GCSC Photography, like Fine Art, is a great way to start your journey to a job in the creative sector, which has been growing steadily in recent years. And by the end of year 11, you'll be super skilled in Photoshop, which is one of the key bits of professional software used in the creative industry all around the world. And here are some of the jobs where photography will be useful and some of the key skills you'll develop. Right, we're just going to go through the answers to the questions that I asked at the beginning. And question number one, when was the first photograph ever taken? Well, that was in 1826, nearly 200 years ago. And what is the rule of thirds? Well, that's a trick that photographers use to make pictures more pleasing to look at. When you take a picture of somebody or something, rather than putting it in the middle of the screen, move it to the side. And what is the macro function? Well, that's the little flower button on the camera. If you click on that, it means you can go super, super close to something and it won't be blurry. Well, thank you very much for watching this little video. 
and look forward to seeing lots of you in September. Hi Year 9! No other subject is as interested in your opinions as much as GCSE Religious Studies. Please take some time in the rest of this presentation to find out more about this fascinating subject. GCSE Religious Studies is for everybody. Doesn't matter if you're religious, non-religious or not even sure about your beliefs. This is a brand new course that you learned for 2021 and you're going to be the first group of people to study this. It's incredibly exciting. Religious studies at GCSE enables you to learn how religion, philosophy and ethics form the basis of our culture. Throughout GCSE Religious Studies, you'll have the opportunity to engage with your questions about beliefs and values. What's the meaning and purpose of life? Ultimately, you're going to reflect on your own beliefs and values. And it doesn't matter if they're religious or non-religious. It's all about understanding who you are and your place in the world. You've just got two exams at the end of year 11. There's no coursework element, but they both follow the same format of just five questions in each exam. There's some short answer questions, some multiple choice, and only one extended answer, which is usually based on a controversial issue or topic. You'll study Christianity, the main religion in the UK, and Islam, which is the world's fastest growing religion, and it's a growing community here in Sheffield too. In the second half of the exam, you'll be critically analysing a range of different themes and assess them from a personal perspective, as well as religious and non-religious beliefs. You'll uncover a range of different skills while studying religious studies at GCSE. So where can religious studies take you? There are a number of different options. If you've got a clear career path in mind, RS can probably link to it. Equally, if you're not so sure, it's a broad enough subject to encompass a whole range of ideas, which can keep things really flexible for you. That was a very short introduction, Year 9, to GCSE Religious Studies, a brand new course at Ulands for September 2021. Please, if you have any uh, further questions, please don't hesitate to ask your RE teacher or please contact me at the email uh, on the slide above. Thank you very much for listening and good luck with making your GCSE choices. Hola Year Nines, it is options time, it's that time of year and some of you might be thinking about studying Spanish which I think is an excellent, excellent idea. Um, so thinking long term about what languages can do for you uh, in, in terms of careers, there's some examples of different areas that you can get into with um, a languages qualification. Um, anybody who's interested in getting into business, any kind of business, um, we have to think that although we might think that a lot of people speak English and most of the countries speak English, or understand English and we think that because whenever we go on holiday people want to speak English to us we can't take it for granted that everybody will be speaking English when it comes to business and things like that so if you can um, if you can approach a business and say oh I speak another language it's a very very valuable skill to have and it says here in, in the presentation the one in five business owners know that they lose business every year because they don't have um, a speaker that can communicate um, in another language um, also uh, post Brexit the post Brexit world we're going to be needing to make new relationships with other countries so again um, speaking uh, speaking a foreign language it's uh, it's going to be a very valuable skill if you know it always has been but particularly in the years to come in this sort of post brexit world that we'll be in um, and there's a, a link to a, a newspaper article here um, that that talks about how much exporting is done to South America and we know that the South American countries the, the, the vast majority of them are Spanish speaking um, and uh, all of these companies have advertised posts with languages um, in the last few years. So if that is something that, that appeals to you, then languages might be a good option for you. So what would we study at GCSE Spanish? So the topics that we would look at, a lot of them you will have seen in Key Stage 3. My friends and family, you saw that in Year 7. Technology in everyday life, you saw that in Year 8. Free time activities, you looked at that in Year 7, Year 8. 
Um, so obviously the differences at GCSE, we look at them in a lot more detail uh, and we get some really complex language going on, which makes us sound just a little bit more fluent and a little bit more at that level. We also look at topics that we haven't done um, in Key Stage 3, so things like global issues, the environment, Greta Thunberg, um, charity work, voluntary work, all those kind of little bit more mature issues that we wouldn't look at necessarily in Key Stage 3. And we also talk about um, what, what would be going on in our lives uh, by the time we get to Year 11, so your career choices, your ambitions, what do you want to do with your life. Uh, so we'd have those kinds of discussions in Spanish, all the while looking at your listening skills, your speaking skills, your writing skills and your reading skills, because uh, normally the exam would have, you'd have four exams, one in each area, so we're constantly developing those skills as well, making you as fluent and as confident as possible. Um, and it's just a really good skill to have. Everybody, everybody is really impressed if you speak another language because it says a lot about you, I think, as, as a person. So definitely uh, a, a, an option worth considering, a, a really valuable skill. If you don't learn Spanish, then how are you going to understand hilarious jokes like this one? Plenty of those. So if you if you like a, if you like a good dad joke, pick Spanish. Hello Year 9, this is your introductory PowerPoint for BTEC Travel and Tourism. In Travel and Tourism you learn all about the world. You learn about all the different places that you might want to go on holiday. Different cities, countries, beaches, islands, cultures, languages, climates. Everywhere that's around the world that would be interesting to go visit is where we learn about in travel and tourism. So that includes places nearby in England and the UK and also places all over the world. Travel and tourism is a BTEC subject. What this means is that the majority of your grade will come from coursework. That basically means this work that you do in each lesson. How it will work in practice is that I will be giving you an assignment and then you'll be going away to work on this independently. So there'll be some guidance along the way, but the focus is for you to take responsibility and to do the work yourself. BTEC Travel and Tourism is split up into four different units. Uh, these are listed here. We have got Unit 1, which is the UK Travel and Tourism sector. Unit 2, which is UK Travel and Tourism destinations. Unit 3, the Travel and Tourism customer experience. And Unit 4, International Travel and Tourism destinations. Each unit is worth 25% of the course and your grade across these four units will be averaged out and that will give you your final grade for the course. Thinking about the skills that you'll need and also the skills that you'll develop during travel and tourism, there's three that really stand out. So the first one is independent research. The second important skill is presentation communication. The third skill you'll be developing is planning organisation. If you choose to take travel and tourism, that'll be a level two qualification. So the next step for you might be to take it at college as a level three qualification. So a lot of colleges around the area will offer level three travel and tourism. From there on, you've got loads of options if you wish to stay within travel and tourism sector. So this could lead you to maybe being an airline pilot or part of a cabin crew, part of a cruise ship crew or a fairground worker. There's loads and loads and loads of opportunities where the types of skills you'll learn in travel and tourism could be applied. If you've got any further questions about this course, then please pass these on to your form tutor. You can also follow the link below for more information. So there you have the wide range of subjects available to you at Ulans Academy as you enter year 10. Please have a look at the website, the, the address is on the page as I'm speaking now. Uh, for more information about subjects, please use uh, the booklet within that, which gives you much more information uh, about the subjects themselves. And speak to the teachers now you're in school, and they will give you more information as well. So I hope that's been useful. We look forward to going through the process. Have a great day.